Bankroll Freddy is a buzzing rapper from Arkansas signed to QC. The initial charge that put Freddy on the state police radar was an April 2022 traffic stop where state police recovered a semi-automatic pistol, a micro Draco pistol, and 18 pounds of marijuana. The feds came into the picture on November 10th of 2022. FBI agents arrested bankroll Freddy after being named in one of three indictments that charged 80 people with crimes ranging from conspiracy to distribute narcotics to weapons violations. The federal government believes Freddy, with the help of his father and other associates, trafficked drugs and guns between Arkansas and Texas, California, Arizona, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. Freddy was one of 35 people indicted in association with the street gang Everybody Killers or EBK that is active in central Arkansas. Freddy's April 2022 traffic stop charges were incorporated into the indictment. This is an example of the feds combining crimes to create a gang or criminal organization narrative. A separate indictment charged 26 people in association with the rival gang, Lodi Murder Mob. Both indictments came about as the result of an investigation by the FBI's Get Rock Task Force. Before we move on, let's really break down what the feds are doing here. The FBI's Get Rock Task Force is combining investigation indictments from rival gangs to charge individuals with RICOs on both sides. This should be a cautionary tale to gang members. You will be held accountable for not only your crimes, but your rivals' crimes as well. Another 18 individuals were indicted as part of a separate investigation by the Drug Enforcement Administration. This was an effort to stop trafficking of fentanyl and other narcotics into central Arkansas. Three people were named in multiple indictments and three others were charged in separate indictments. This was a calculated plan by the feds because there were three people named in multiple indictments. This is a strategy to present all the evidence together and connect everyone, even if they never worked side by side during these alleged crimes. Perfect. Bankroll. Freddy is only in one indictment, so with a good lawyer and a solid strategy, he had some wiggle room to beat some of these charges, and he did. But let's get into some of the testimonies and the witnesses in the case that the feds try to build against bankroll. One of Freddy's marijuana plugs was a main government witness. The supplier, a man who goes by the name of JG, plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute marijuana. This federal RICO charge holds a possible 20-year prison sentence. JG testified that he sold between $5,000 to $15,000 worth of marijuana in an average month. He says he met Bankroll Freddy through friends in the music industry at a locale studio in 2021. They began working together and JG sold Bankroll Freddy between 10 to 20 pounds of marijuana on five separate occasions. During their initial meeting, JG says Bankroll Freddy tried some of his product at a studio session, and JG told Freddy if he ever needs marijuana to call him, they exchanged numbers. But what Freddy didn't know is that JG had been raided in October 2021. So this means that JG was serving Bankroll Freddy after the raid. Most likely, JG's phone was tapped, or he was wearing a wire during at least one of these drug transactions. That's how the feds was able to gather enough evidence to indict Freddy. The suspected trafficking of marijuana and fentanyl along with guns is enough to get anyone on the feds' radar. But bankroll. Freddy's first traffic stop in April of 2022 was just a small part of a bigger plan by the feds to take down EBK and Lodi murder mob by any means necessary. The testimonies from multiple witnesses and informants, including his plug JG, hurt bankroll Freddy's case. But the biggest reason for the federal government's aggressiveness towards bankroll, Freddy, EBK, Lodi murder mob, and everyone else in this 35-man indictment was a shooting that took place in October 2020. Pine Bluff Police Detective Kevin Collins was shot and killed while serving a warrant on a EBK member. Detective Collins was one of the leading state officers spearheading this investigation with the feds. 
Both the feds and state police heavily relied on his intel to take down EBK and Lodi murder mob. Information gathered by Collins allowed federal agents to get 12 wiretaps through June of 2022. This is the intel that lead to the arrest of Bankroll Freddy, his father, and others. Officer Collins spent his last moments alive working the investigation, serving a warrant to an EBK member. The same gang the feds say Bankroll Freddy is affiliated with. The feds will not let up until they feel Collins' work is finished. Many of these officers take this case seriously and feel a personal duty to make sure everyone arrested in the indictment gets a just sentence. Once Officer Collins died, the state of Arkansas and the federal government made taking down these gangs priority number one. When it comes to getting revenge and or justice, the police move like gangs. The fact that the state pushed for the death penalty against the man who was found guilty of Officer Collins' murder. Tell us police believe in a body for a body, the same way the streets do. Thank you for watching Urban AI, a strategic thinking media platform. Like, share, and subscribe for more content. The murder trial for a man accused of killing a Pine Bluff police detective is happening this week. Wake Up Central's Michaela Johnson joins us now with the new details. Michaela? Hayden, Karen, the state is working to move jurors to a death penalty verdict for Kashawn Smith. Smith is on trial for the death of Kevin Collins and battery charges for shooting another officer. Pine Bluff's detective Kevin Collins was shot and killed in the line of duty back in 2020 as he was serving an arrest warrant for Kashawn Smith in Pine Bluff. Smith was wanted for a separate murder in Georgia at the time of the shooting and was a part of a gang that was being investigated by Collins, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies. We're nearing the three year mark of when Collins died in October of 2020, the shooting happening at the Econo Lodge in Pine Bluff. Last year, the FBI arrested 43 people on federal gun and drug trafficking charges. The suspects were a part of the EBK and Lodi murder mob gangs. Police at the time said these gangs have committed crimes between Pine Bluff and Little Rock. Now, back in 2020, the Pine Bluff Police Department retired call number 520, which is the number belonging to Detective Collins, and New Life Church created a memorial scholarship in his name. The trial for Kashawn Smith is expected to last until next Friday. Again, the state is pushing for the death penalty. Michaela Johnson for Wake After Up After nearly three years of waiting, the trial of the man accused of shooting and killing Detective Kevin Collins has come to an end. After a four day trial and a full day of deliberations, the jury returned a verdict. THV 11's Rebecca Brown has been following this trial from the beginning and joins us live with all the details now. Rebecca. Yeah, Faith, it has been an emotional week for here for everyone involved at the Jefferson County Courthouse. But after reviewing all the evidence and hearing all the witness testimonies, the jury unanimously decided that Keyshawn Smith was guilty of first degree murder. Now, just taking you back from the beginning, Detective Kevin Collins was murdered on October 5th, 2020, after attempting to arrest Keyshawn Smith at the Econa Lodge in Pond Bluff. The prosecutors originally at the beginning of the trial sought out for capital murder along with two counts of first degree battery when they first accusing Keyshawn Smith of shooting and killing Detective Kevin Collins. But the jury decided that the prosecutors did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Keyshawn Smith premeditated killing and shooting Detective Collins. But in today's verdict, the jury found Keyshawn Smith guilty in first degree murder, as well as firearm enhancement, adding more to his sentence, but not guilty in the two counts of first degree battery. Jornetta Hobbs, Kevin Collins' mother, and the prosecutor Kyle Hunter, representing the state in this trial, says today justice was served. This verdict doesn't bring Kevin back, but it shows us that the system works. It's been a long time getting it resolved, and we're we're, we're very uh, uh, glad to get that done for for uh, uh, Kevin Collins' family, and uh, also for the community. Uh, it's it a uh, very big, big case in this town. Keyshawn Smith was sentenced to 35 years in prison and he is eligible for parole once he serves 70 percent of his sentence. Now, we did reach out to the defense attorney as well as Keyshawn Smith's mother. Both declined to comment and also um, the judge from the beginning of the trial said both families have already lost. Back to you, Faith. 
All right, Rebecca, thank you. Smith's defense claimed the shooting was self-defense throughout the trial. You can find all of our reporting on all four days of the trial on THV11.com right now.